And we're talking about activating your faith in God. Repeat after me, activating your faith in God. Hebrew 11, 1 and 6, let's read together. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about we do not see. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. James chapter 2 verse 14 family. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claim to have faith but have no deeds? Can such faith save them? But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even demons believe that in shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scriptures were fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his awesome word. We'll officially say good morning to all of you and thank God for your presence in the body of Christ. We know we serve an awesome, awesome God. And for those who may be visiting today, first time visitors, we're so glad that God have you in his house. We're grateful, we are so thankful. Uh, this particular brochure, this magazine I called it, it was put together primarily to bring you up to speed as to our way forward over the next three months. Wanted to let you know that the church is ready to do the work of ministry holistically. Inside here you will find the schedule of the next few uh, months. You will also find the Sunday school classes are coming back for the adults. You will understand the timing of those classes. You will also understand that we have a lot of ministry opportunities, not for some of you, but for all of us. And our, our magazine is 90% done, but I wanted to get something in your hand because Sunday school classes start on the first Sunday in October. We got to fine proof this thing this week. And so next week you'll get another copy that will be pretty much in its completed form. But if you see some things in here, give us a call that we miss or we didn't get right, but this is 90% completed, but I want to put something in your hands to let you be able to know that Bethel's family is alive and well and we're pushing full speed ahead. Now family, our sermon today speaks about activating your faith. And I thought about something that uh, we used back in the early 70s, uh, Brother Dudley Bro and I. Uh, for, for those of us who used to get, you know, jerry curls. They, they had a solution called an activator. You know, and the activator was used in between your perms. And it would somehow, you would wash the cleanse and put that activator on that thing. And brought the curls back like you just did them. Activating your faith has to do with not just saying you have faith. It has to be activated. It has to be put into actions. And in our current crisis, in our land that we're living in, there has been, and let's use this pandemic called COVID-19. 
It has gripped fear in the heart of the Christ Christian community. I'm not concerned about what the world does because the world will do what the world is intended to do. And that's do everything with the exception of obeying God. But Christians have also found themselves living in fear and not in faith. They have somehow glued themselves to CNN, glued themselves to the local news channels, glued themselves to every word that comes from the politician's lips. And they have positioned themselves to operate their spiritual life in fear. But this is a message to the body of Christ, the believers of the Most High God. You have to understand that we walk by faith and not by sight. And why is it so very important that the body of Christ activate the faith that you have, not in man, but in God? You must realize when one activate his or her faith, what you are demonstrating is that I totally depend on God and God alone. I don't depend on the science or the experts or the physicians or the astrologers. I don't depend on mere man for my refuge, my peace, my healing, my joy, my substance, my resources. I depend totally upon God. Now, I know it's easier said than done when you're talking to unfaithful people. And part of the reason that most Christians find themselves struggling, even being able to come back to worship in the body of Christ, their hearts are yearning to be back in fellowship, but the fear of what has been propagated upon God's people has kept them with question marks. But today's message, I pray, will help to liberate individuals who find themselves stuck between CNN, Fox, and the politicians. The CDC is important. What the scientists and experts are saying, it is important. But they are limited in knowledge. They're limited in wisdom. They don't know everything. This pandemic is over six months and they still don't have, amen, a vaccine or a cure. But there's been trillions and trillions of dollars that's flooded the market. And now who cares if we get a vaccine or not? This message is about a real healer. This message is about God himself. This is about what Jesus can do. It talks about the gifts of the Holy Ghost working inside of you. So the writer comes in in Hebrew 11, 1, and says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see, the body of Christ need to look at every obstacle and every situation from the eyes of faith. Knowing that God is so wise, he's not going to put no more on his children than his children can bear. And God will always allow a way of escape. But if we don't activate our faith, we will never know how powerful God is. For a blind man who could not see, when God restored his sight, now he know how powerful God is. For a man who never walked before, when God restored his mobility, his limbs, he started walking, he knows how powerful God is. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years gave all the money to all the doctors in town. But she still bled after 12 years. All of her money gone. But now Jesus comes on the scene. He heal 
calls her by her face. He says, daughter, your face has healed you. Now she knows the power that's in God. Many of you have been sick. You've been suffering. You've been going through storms of many kind way before COVID-19. And God stepped in and God healed. God delivered. God rescued. God provided. And he's the same God that provided back then. He's the same God that can provide right now. He's the same God you stood up in faith to believe and trust when nothing was going on. But it ought to be the same God you trust and believe when all hell has broken loose. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. In the evidence of things not seen. And only you can activate your faith. There's a lot of things other people might can do for you, but activating your own faith, that's your job. You can be encouraged, you can be influenced, but until you get behind the driver's seat, start the car up, put it in drive, you're not going nowhere. But everybody else is on the highway of faith and you park there on the side of the street. Talking about Jesus is real. When you say that he's your Jehovah Jireh, do you know what that means? He's your great provider. If he's your healer, he can't be your part-time healer. Because right here in Hebrew 11, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, I don't put my trust in man. If you find the scripture that's in the middle of the entire Bible, it's Psalms 118, verse number 8. This is a scripture in the center of the entire Bible. And it says, it's better to take refuge in God than to put your trust in man. And so for one of two of you, I need for you to stop watching the news. It's scaring the hell out of you. You've got to be mindful that the very scientists, the experts, are the same one that said there is no God. They're the same ones who have somehow evolved to evolution to say you came from a monkey. But when I look into the word of God, I realize that I'm a child of the king. I was already predestined in my birth before I came here. It was God that saw my unformed body before one of my life limbs became. He saw me when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. God saw me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Psalms 139 if you need some help. God saw me even before my mother and father even met each other. You've already predestined to be here. God, your days have been numbered by God. He knows every strand of hair upon your head or what used to be there. He knows everything about your life. He knows the beginning, he knows the middle, and he knows the end. But what God is saying, will you activate your faith in me? In the truth of the matter, a lot of Christians are still dependent on themselves. Marriages are falling because they're depending on themselves to keep it together. Husbands and wives are on different pages because they're expecting them to keep it together. Only God can keep two imperfect people together in perfect symmetry. 
Because I don't care how long you've been married, you can find something wrong with each other every morning. You look at, oh, there it is. <laughs> That's why God give grace. That's why God give mercy. That's why God give forgiveness. Because he knows only he can hold sinful man and sinful woman together in perfect symmetry. It's only by the blood and the grace of God that marriages are held together. So when you're asking couples who've been married for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 25 years, 15 years, 20 years, they tell you, God got us together. We couldn't do it on our own. So they activated their faith to trust in God. You can't even protect your own kids. God does that. Because you can't be with your kids everywhere they are. You got to release them and say, God, listen, cover my children tonight. There's not a parent in here that don't go to bed at night. Say, Lord, I don't know where they are, but God, you know where they are, God. Protect them because they travel here, they travel there. I don't know what they're doing, Lord, but you do. God, protect them. And he does. So activating your faith is crucial because if you don't, amen, have the faith that's necessary, it's impossible for you to please God. Now I must share with you one of the points there is activating your faith, you will become unpopular. That's point number one. You will become unpopular. You don't get talked about lied on and persecuted for just activating your faith standing on what you believe that the lord has said and i'm not telling you something i heard i'm telling you something i know just to keep the doors of this church open you know how much ridicule in pastor chatter that's out there in the land regarding pastor august Taking all these people, you're going to kill all of them. Well, there haven't been one person in this church who've been here actively through the five, six, seven months who've died. The Lord in his infinite wisdom, even though we might have some health scares, the good Lord says, listen, I got you. I'll walk you through the fire, but you're not going to be burned. I'll let you go through the lion's den and you won't be eaten up. I will let you walk on water with me because I know who you are because you're under my umbrella of favor. And when you're under, under the umbrella of my favor, it doesn't matter if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death because you're not leaving here until I get ready for you. And no COVID-19 going to be bigger than me. There's no politician that's bigger than me. There's no news channel that's bigger than me. It is me that you are to understand. Listen, because activate your face will make you unpopular. Noah was unpopular. He was talked about. His kids were talked about. Because he decided to keep his faith in God. And follow what God said versus what man said. And Noah saved his family. Flood destroyed everybody. You look at Abraham as we jump into James, look at Abraham. Abraham was known as a man of faith. Abraham had to activate his faith. He had to put his trust in God. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, get from amongst your people. And he says, now go to a land that I will show you. And God gave Abraham a blessing, says, listen, anybody that support you and honor you, I'm going to, amen, bless them. Anybody that get in the way, try to curse you, I will curse them. So Abraham grabbed his wife, Sarah, and they began to go in a direction that God was leading them. And God told Abraham, go to a land I will show you. So Abraham had to activate his faith, knowing it's God that's speaking, and go to a land he had never been before. 
When God call you and I into ministry, call you and I to follow him, he tell you we got to leave that which is comfortable, that which is normal. We got to go and follow him and where he's leading us sometimes, amen, you don't know where you're going until you get there. But let's stick with Abraham for a minute because Abraham was married to a woman named Sarah. Now Abraham is up in age in this moment, in his 80s when God called him and his wife is right along his same age line and God tell Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. God looked at Sarah in her old age and said, listen, you're going to have a baby. Sarah looked back at God and started laughing. He says, you've got to be joking. I'm old. In other words, God, that's never going to happen. You see, when God speaks to you, you got to at least have enough sense to be faithful to hear what he's saying. Story goes to say that as they get into Egypt, the Pharaoh of that day spotted Sarah, and Sarah was fast. She was good looking, and, 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 and Pharaoh wanted her. He asked her husband, Abraham, who is that woman? Abraham lied, said, that's my sister. The Pharaoh wanted to invade Sarah, but God blocked in and said, no, you're not going to do this thing. I have a plan and purpose for their lives. Story goes on to say that Abraham and Sarah is sleeping one night in the bed. Got to watch your children. They're looking dead at me and my mom there, Reverend Massey. They won't know how they got in. Yeah, they paying attention. They paying attention. They might not be saying nothing, but their eyes are talking to me. Sarah had a handmaid. She had a slave girl named Hagar. Hagar is a slave to Sarah. Whatever Sarah wanted Hagar to do, you do the laundry, you cook, you clean, you mop the floors. Anything I want you to do, fold the clothes. You do what I ask you to do. Make my bed up. Fix me some dinner. Fix me some breakfast. Fix me a snack. Get me a cold glass of lemonade. And she had to do it. But while her and Abraham was laying in the bed, Sarah, after being told by God, she's going to bring forth a child herself. She decided that she figured it out. She turned and looked to her husband. Now, husbands and wives, listen, wives, don't use this. Don't use this recipe. This is not activating your fate, it's activating stupidity. She looked at Abraham and said, guess what, Abraham? I have a handmaid here, a little slave girl named Hagar. And she's my slave girl. I own her. And if by chance she has a child, that child also belongs to me. So Sarah looked at Abraham and said, listen, I know what God meant now. He want you to go down the hall and fix dinner. Before she can get the word dinner out, he was already supped with the woman. Two months later, Hagar is walking around the house because she's full of dinner. Sarah began to say, Hagar, come here, come here, come here, come here. I need you to do these drapes, mop the floors. I need you to, amen, you know, take my bed and, and, and take care of you, been Hagar. Hagar started rubbing her dinner. See, <laughs> somebody told you wrong. <laughs> I'm full of dinner. 
So that become tension between Hagar and now Sarah. Sarah got mad and angry, and Hagar did deliver the dinner that she, amen, promised. It was Ishmael, and she called that dinner night Ishmael. But it was not the promised dinner that God had promised Sarah. So God told Sarah and Abraham, Sarah, you think you're old. I'm going to wait 10 plus years before you bring the dinner that I told you you would deliver. Now Sarah ended up having a child. She named him Isaac. Now she loved baby Isaac. That's her only son. Now mothers will attest to you, they might not say it publicly. They love their daughters. All but they adore their sons. They will put the daughter out. But the sons can stay until. The sons can stay until they both collect their social security. But God comes to Abraham and says, Abraham, listen, I need for you to sacrifice Isaac to me Abraham did not even check with Sarah because if she struggled believing God would allow her to have a child in her old age think about what struggle she would have had knowing the Lord has asked Abraham to sacrifice her son so Abraham took Isaac up up on the mount and while they were going Isaac looked at his father and said, Father, where is the sacrifice? Abraham looked at his son and says, the Lord will provide. Because Abraham had understood that God will come through, and he did exactly. He tied his son, placed him on the altar, reached down and grabbed his knife out of his sheath, and he had the knife in the opposition, and God said, Abraham, Abraham, don't lay a hand upon the boy. God was saying, now I know you love me more than anything else. He says, look there in the thickets. There's a ram caught up in it. That's your sacrifice. Let me help us, family. Sometimes you're not activating your faith because what God is asking you to do don't make sense to the scientists. Because it doesn't make sense to the experts. It doesn't make sense to Dr. Fushi and his team. But if God tell you to do something, you're going to activate your faith, trusting and believing that if God can lead you, he will also provide the ram in the bush when the time comes. Now God is a God that rewards those who diligently seek him as you're walking in faith. Abraham was known as a righteous man. And it was a credit to him through his faith that he was justified. All of us are sinners, family. When we activate our faith in God, it's the remnants of our salvation in Christ. When we stand boldly upon the throne and say, for God I live, for God I die, blessed be in the name of the Lord. And I know some folks in here that have been through some health scares. They've been under surgery not one time, not twice, but more than three times. But the Lord was not ready to take them. The doctors would scratch their heads and say, listen, there's no more we can do for you. And the Lord said, I'm not ready for you. Terry Jackson was in the service, in the early service, been battling cancer nine years, but did I tell you she was in the service? Yes, she might have a walker, she might have a stroller, but let me, she put one foot 
in front of the other and God is still blessing her mind and as long as there's breath in her body and she's able to get herself together she want to be in the house of God why is that so important she activates her faith I remember several years ago sister Ox and I was in Florida celebrating one of our anniversaries and while we were in Florida I got a phone call she was in the choir earlier Tamika Lemons uh, she was in the choir just a few seconds ago singing to the most high God and she suffered with Crohn disease been battling for a while and when she called me this was about five six seven years ago she called me and then you know she was going through her challenge in the hospital through the Crohn disease it was cramped she said pastor I want to be here for my children I can't see myself. When she called me, she was in the hospital. She said, I want to be here for my children. I can't go right now. I'm scared. I, I, I pray for me. I, I need some encouragement. And while they're talking to her and praying with her, I said, listen, God is not going to take you till he get ready for you. And I said, my sister, you got to understand about life. Life has some ups and downs. Life has some obstacles. Sometimes you get, amen, something in your life that you can't deal with, but God says, my grace will be sufficient for you. I said, here's what you need to do. Here's what I do. I've learned to get up every morning and run the race. I get up every morning and I run the race. I do whatever I need to do. I mean, I may not do it as fast as I used to do it, but I'm going to get up and do a little bit and a little bit more. And I said, baby, I don't fear death. What has to happen, you keep running for Jesus and you let death catch up with you. Come on now, say amen. I told you this morning she was in the choir. But also, after we had that conversation, the next year, she found herself serving in Haiti. Amen. Being a blessing in another country. Let me tell you something. God have no limitations. When you exercise and execute and activate your faith, God shows up even when the scorecard don't look good for you. Even when man say you're not going to make it. God has the last word to life and death issues. You know miracles happen all the time. You see bad car accidents happening all the time. And people get up and walk away from them. Let me tell you something. Miracles are happening all the time. So when you activate your faith, know that you will become unpopular. The second thing you must realize, you're going to pray more. You're going to stay in tune with God. And if you stay in tune with God, reading his word, reading his scriptures, it'll keep you in perfect peace. Some of us are battling right now with this election. Family, listen, go to bed. Go to bed. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. They're still not on the throne. So don't get caught up with all this political junk that's going on. There's wickedness and evil in all places. And my Bible tell me, no, not one is righteous. And politicians lie all the time. So don't get caught up into that. You just got to get up every morning and say, God, I put my whole faith in you. I'm going to trust you. If I get sick, God, I may go to the hospital physically, but God, I'm trusting in you to bring my healing and deliverance. No matter what obstacles come my way, I know I'm going to prevail because God, you're with me. Is the attitude of faith. When you're going through your storms, amen, hold on to Jesus' unchanging hands. Yes, every now and then the boat is going to rock. But if Jesus is on the boat that you're riding, you need to be at peace. Because he can speak to the storms of life. And did I tell you he's a healer? Hi, I'm Walter August. I want to invite you to join our email list and also plan your trip 
to Bethel's Family. Bethel's Family is an exciting church in the Fondren Southwest area of our city of Houston. We're impacting the local community and also global community. Bethel's Family have every ministry available to you that meet every family need through multi-generations. So whether it's a pregnant mom all the way to a senior adult and everything in between. And we're also one of the greater ministries in Houston that's meeting the physical, emotional, spiritual needs of the entire person. We not only impact people in the Houston area, but also we're national and also we're global. Join our email list by clicking the button below to plan your trip to Bethel's family. Thank you for taking this opportunity to visit with us here at Bethel's family.